What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today, at the risk of looking and sounding extremely pretentious, uh, we're gonna go. <laughs> we're gonna skim through a Bud K catalog, and I want everybody to keep in mind um, this. Truthfully, looking through the Bud K catalog is a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of us, as we have evolved in this knife world, we kind of grow away from some of the, you know black tactical looking or some of the more nonsensical items in the uh the knife and edc world and we we uh, sort of uh evolve towards things that are more practical cutting tools in certain ways however i would be lying if i said that i don't enjoy looking through some of these catalogs and truthfully just so everybody knows every now and then there are things in here that are legitimately designed by people who know what they're doing and that are made with some quality materials you know not everything in here is um uh, as as us snobs would say mall ninja or tactic cool right so i'm going to be looking through here and we're going to be laughing and kind of joking a little bit but there's nothing wrong if like if if you enjoy the bud k catalog uh and you like to order stuff out of it hey there is nothing wrong with that at all i don't want to sound preachy uh at, at all this is going to be just for fun and for those of you who don't know I mean, I'll do a little free advertising for Bud K. Yeah, check them out. I mean, like, if anything, the magazine, I've got a ton of these lying around, um, you know, ones that are sent uh, as promotional items, and uh, they're definitely fun to just pick up and flip through. Absolutely. So we're going to be taking a look at this just for fun. Um, as you guys know, I do have Patreon, so if you'd like to get your hands on some cool Metal Complex stickers, help support the channel, and gain access to my once-a-week Patreon-exclusive content, you can do that. Links down in the description. I've also got stuff like uh, EDC tools, EDC maintenance gear. I've got some amazing uh, American production knives down there, some of my favorite budget knives down there, a whole bunch of stuff. No matter what your itch is, feel free to scratch it down there. Um, and then also the link for my Redbubble store. So if you want to pick up some Metal Complex, merch you can check that out and did you guys know i have a sister channel called silent complex so if you can't stand me yakking on for 20 minutes at a time no worries i have a completely silent channel that's just two minutes uh two minute overviews of some of your favorite knives okay so let's take a look here um if you have never checked out this magazine, I think you might be able to get the gist of what is going to be in here and i have a whole bunch of these but i haven't opened this one because i want to look through it with uh, you guys as you can see here, we have a very practical bad axe bat um, that could be used in a multitude of different settings. Let's go here to page one. Fantastic. First thing is a cane sword. Everybody needs a good cane sword. This one appears to be in, um, is it Damascus? Oh boy, wow. Uh, this Rarusha Forge Sword uh, Cane offers exquisite details of a truly custom sword cane. 23 inch Damascus steel blade. Wow, 36 to 42 HRC. Hmm, okay, interesting. Um, we do of course have ballast songs of uh, a multitude of variety here. Only $19.99, you can get of course the coveted rainbow steel. We all know how uh, performance oriented that stuff can be. Um, see like, sometimes I see stuff like this and it says menacingly sharp karambit. But this, I mean, is this blade shape like just ridiculous or is there an, is there a point to it? I don't, I mean like that's, that's the thing. It's like looking through here, I don't want to like make fun of anything because my knowledge, I don't have like a, an, you know, an all encompassing knowledge of knives. So it's, you know, doing this is risky because I'm like opening this up and laughing at some of this stuff. But at the same time, I know full well that there are functional items mixed in here. Um, here we go. Like this D2, this apparently, this dagger here is made out of D2 steel. Now I'm, I'm sure it's a, they're $106. Hmm. I'm not sure that I doubt that that's D2 steel. What does it say here? Sturdy dagger that you can carry discreetly. Solid one piece CNC machine D2 steel. I don't know that that's a $106 knife, but it does look to be a lot more functional than some of the other items in here. Um, what else do we have here? A bunch of stuff that I don't know about. And then we have a Trump themed Timberwolf Bowie. That's interesting, fun, patriotic. Um, okay, gas masks and hoods and one of those, uh, Jack, what do they call those originally? Jack Commandos, something like that. Ugh. Not, um, not the best for EDC. 
this is the kind of stuff that I expect to see in here, you know. But for $51.99, wait a sec, what are we looking at here? What? Okay, now, wait a minute. The Ultimate Tactical Karambit, Full Tang 2CR13 Stainless Steel Blade. What is 2CR13? Good lord. Includes TPU and nylon belt sheath. Inject, uh, injection molded nylon handle. Pointed. I'm fighting the urge to read this through the phone. Sorry, I promise I'm a, a, an average. I, I'm of average intelligence, at least when it comes to reading words. Wow, you sound so smart. Complex. <laughs> Pointed open ring pommel. Ten and a quarter inches overall length. Four and five eighths inch blade. That is huge. Only $51.99. MSRP is eighty-five dollars. Wow, that is um, that is some serious tactical stuff here. Um, this is this looks to be based off the original. I, I forget who invented the original fighting dagger, but I, I mean this. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like this is blurring a line between n nonsense and actual functional designs. Okay, we've got some budget OTFs in here. Some fifty-some dollar OTF. I mean, that's not a bad price for an OTF if it's okay. This is OS eight. So bring it up here. It says OS eight stainless steel blade, three and a half inches, eight and seven tenths overall. Uh, double edge. It looks to be a true double edge. Um, I have never heard of that brand before. This entry. That's why this is fun because some of the brands I've never heard of swords. 2,000 layers of hand-forged outstanding cutting power. That is quite a statement. Let me read, let me let you guys read that there. This Shinwa, am I pronouncing that correctly? Sword offers a 26 and a half inch blade of Damascus steel that has been hand-folded to deliver more than 2,000 layers of outstanding cutting power. It includes coordinated, uh, coordinating hardwood scabbard, measures 39 inches overall, Powerful full tank construction, cast metal, Manuki, and Suba C cast metal. You lost me like right there. Traditional handle wrap of genuine ray skin and nylon cordage. How much does this cost? That's oh, $100. MSRP is $260, though. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, but see, I mean, this is where I, it's like I, I'm, I'm joking around, but me, like 16 year old me, would have been like, wow, but. I don't know what, I, I mean, like, it's it's Damascus, but what's the Damascus made out of, right? I mean, there's these other questions that I never would have thought to ask. And, you know, if this was, if that was a, if that thing was 40 bucks, yeah, go crazy. Chop some watermelons in half in your backyard, you know. But $94, uh, you know, I'd have been tempted even then, but I don't know exactly what it's made out of. And perhaps I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe the, Maybe somebody has this and they're like, hey, it's a good deal. Hatchet hammers, those are fun. Actually, that I'm I'm joking around. Um, we have a a couple of hatchet hammers here in the garage, and those are actually pretty useful. This one's pretty um uh exotic, and they're making it out to be something different. Feathered accent faux leather and fur grip, rugged 19 inch authentic hardwood shaft. Ugh, wording, wording, pipe bowl built. What? Pipe bowl built into the back of the axe head? Oh God, okay, I'm not gonna zoom in on that. Um, no, but that's based off a hatchet hammer and I've got a couple of um, a couple of those and uh, they, they actually are very handy. Now, here we go, we're getting into the fantasy stuff here. Now, see, I'll say this though, uh, Gil Hibben, um, I mean, I know that that's a more famous name than I've even though I'm not up to speed on him. That actually is a fairly appealing looking uh, dagger. I'm not gonna say that anybody really needs that. It's $44.99. Unfortunately, it's a 420 stainless steel blade. So we're not looking at anything that's, you know, really any any sort of, uh, you know, nothing to say in terms of real high quality materials there. But you know, if that floats your boat, then knock yourself out. Deathly cool pen set, so if you wanna Right with the Grim Reaper, okay. There's some dragon stuff down here. I knew eventually we'd start seeing dragon stuff. Crossbows, okay. Moving on here, walkie talkies. Um, we've got uh, some antibiotics. It's <laughs> a really weird place to put that. It's like, <laughs> we're looking at um, Fish Flex antibacterial fish medication. Wait, oh, wait a second. These antibiotics save lives. Equal safety potency to human uh, to, to human antibiotics, not for human consumption. 
Cures bacterial disease. Okay, so these are for fish and birds, not for people. But also you can get this medieval um, mug or skull cup um, or walkie-talkie. So this is, there's a whole bunch going on over here. Whoops. Drop my rat. Oh, let me pick this guy up. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, which knife did I drop? That's okay, this one's a beater. Um, and then we have um, the Honshu uh, High Carbon 1060 steel blade sword. You can see there um, that here's the, the practical application. You can see somebody's, um, you know, giving a demonstration on um, basically the circumstance you need to be involved with to use this properly. Um, we have a trench knife. <laughs> it's very, very intense. What's this? Rock bottom buckshot. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. Interesting. Headlamp. Some, uh, some gear bags. Uh, you know, I don't have a problem with this. That's kind of neat. $22.98 each. That's not a bad price. Some of the, I mean, these are kind of neat. I, I don't know anything about bags, right? But it, you put stuff in it, okay? Um, I mean, I'm sure they're, just like with anything, there's higher and lower quality. You get what you pay for. I'm focused on this right here. This is, this seems like a heck of a deal here. The Bad Axe. This Bad Axe will, uh, this Bad Axe Bat will have them running for the hills. With your Bad Axe Bat in your hand, there will be absolutely no question as to whether or not you mean business. Well, I'd have to agree with that statement. That would be my first, uh, you know, somebody walks through the door with that thing at a library, I'd be like, that guy means business. <laughs> that guy definitely means business. Uh, vinyl tape wrapped grip, stainless steel, seven and a half inch wide axe head, 18 inch blade, heavy duty stainless steel pins, wooden baseball bat handle, 33 inches overall length. What's the point of the, of it being a baseball bat back here? Right? I mean, it's not like, it's, it's actually just a club that's meant to like barely resemble a baseball bat. Um, but it's essentially just the wood piece that this attaches to. It doesn't look like there's anything to speak of in terms of structural integrity there. I would question whether or not it would hold up after a couple of swings. Um, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Now I, so I gotta be honest with you. This, this would be uh, tempting to me. Like even right now, this is the type of thing where I'm like, Oh, neat. Right. Rugged and ready for battle. The Honshu. And I, I mean, like I've heard of this brand before. I don't have any experience with them, but you know, you, you do hear claims of people going out and using stuff like this. I mean, in terms of like, like in their backyards and they're chopping stuff up or whatever, and that they are fairly durable. The Honshu broadsword represents a modern spin on a proven time-tested sword design with sleek, rugged tactical engineering and perfect blade to hilt balancing. That's quite a claim. Fits securely in a black wooden scabbard that includes a leather belt hanger, features a rugged no-slip TPR hilt. I don't know what TPR is. Uh, razor sharp 33 and 3 8 inch 1060 high carbon steel blade measures 43 and a half inches overall. Um, I think that they made this sword look bigger than it actually is. This lady here, um, you know, if we're looking at a 43 and a half inch item overall, I'm going to say that, and no, nothing against anybody who's, you know, tall or short, that's, that's besides the point, but they have made this sword look much bigger than it actually is by taking the picture from a very specific angle and using somebody who's, I'm going to guess under five foot five to really make it look big. Um, but the truth is, is it's, it's not, but that's, that's oftentimes how they do this. Now they want $200 for this thing. And it's a 300 MSRP $346 at 199 bucks. I mean, with a sword, you're not going to make a sword out of M390. You're going to want it to be lower Rockwell. You're going to want it to have, you know, um, basically, it's it's not edge retention. I don't know a lot about swords. I'm not going to pretend that I do. I'm not like a sword guy. But you don't want the same type of uh, high-end, like, powder metallurgy. Like, you're not going to want to make a sword out of Maximet or M390, right? Um, that doesn't make any sense. So the high-carbon stuff... Um, the stuff that's going to be better for impact cutting uh, and uh, that's going to be, you know, really low. Rock. You don't want chipping or anything like that, so you want to lower rock. Well, okay, I'm not going to argue that. I don't know anything about 1060, but I always see the spring steels, the 1085s, and sometimes the 1095s, 200 bucks. That thing better be, you know, the only thing that I would ever buy something like that for is just for fun and to, uh, you know, 
fill up a uh, two liter um, uh, pop bottle full of water and chop it in half, right? Or I, I would I would want to I would want to make sure that it can actually chop into a log and I can pull it back out and it'd be fine, right? For two hundred bucks, it better do that. Um, we have evil skull decanter that turn it turns heads here. Uh, turns heads. Evil Skull Decanter turns heads for only fourteen ninety nine. Also comes in uh, glass. Um, I would imagine that they're both glass. Interesting. Okay. We have more cane swords. Yeah, we have stuff like, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, this masterpiece is sure to add some punch to your collection. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's in the Expendables. Check this out. And we know anything that came out of those movies, it's got to be the real deal, right? How much do they want for this? 106 bucks? It's made out of 3CR, guys, 3CR 13 stainless steel blade, gold plated blade catcher and guard, synthetic ivory handle with expendables artwork. $106. Oh boy. That's why. I mean, like, again, I'm not trying, I'm not coming down on, like, I, I got into this hobby looking at stuff like this, enjoying magazines like this, and I gotta admit, I still enjoy looking at stuff like this. I don't, I'm not gonna buy any of it, but it sure is fun to look at. But there is something to, you know, I, I'm thankful for, for learning what I have learned so that I'm not tempted to buy things that are, are some of the things in this magazine are just, they're just too much money for what they are, right? Interesting, very, very combat oriented stuff. More hatchets. We've got uh, Damascus uh, pattern $20 blade. Seeing some stuff in here that's obviously taking um, uh, inspiration from a lot of other popular models. A whip for $50 for all of your whipping needs, uh, your day to day whipping needs. That's weird. More cane swords. <laughs> Lots of cane swords. Um, scanners. That's neat. Some of these uh, are just. Oh gosh, look at this. Well, first off here, we do have a uh, exclusive at cost offer. That's amazing, the generosity. Um, only $145 each. Anyways, we've got um, the USMC Marine, uh, the World War II, you know, like the, what the, uh, the K-Bar one, but you can get it for $20, right? What is it made out of? It's made out of stainless steel. $20, right? Wow! K-Bar charges like 75 bucks for those. So this must be a steel, right? Well, uh, stainless steel blade. Yeah, we don't know. Oh, wait, no, here we go. F solid 420 stainless steel fixed blade. Look, a lot of the K-Bar stuff is made out of 1095. I know they've got a fighter that's made out of D2. Um, I mean, there's a lot of arguments here or there, but um, yeah, this is a $20 knife. The K bar is definitely more of a $75 knife. You know, there's a difference. It's not, you know, I point this stuff out to let people know it's not like this one's just, wow, a way better deal. No, it's made out of something different. Look at this. Look how much sense this makes. What's, what circumstance? Um, we're, <laughs> okay. I don't know. That's funny though. We have a, oh, what's this? Over here, spectacular fusion of breathtaking contrast. You see the sword? We have the spectacular fusion here. Uh, this heirloom quality katana is built to be treasured by generations of your descendants. Wow. Your legacy preserved in hand forged black Damascus steel. Wait, was that a sentence? Your legacy preserved in hand forged. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was reading it as your legacy preserved in hand and then forged black Damascus steel. No, it's your legacy preserved in hand forged black Damascus steel. Okay, I got you. Sorry about that. Full tang, 28 and an eighth uh, black Damascus steel blade, hand forged by master sw swordsmiths. We don't, we don't know who those people are, but they're, they're master swordsmiths. Tsuka wrapped in faux ray skin. Um, flawlessly cast Suba. I don't know what any of this is. Only $74.98. All right. Well, it's not the most expensive thing in the entire world. And if that's your thing, then go for it. You know, again, no judgment to anybody who's into this stuff. Oh, boy. We have some very, very colorful um, T-shirts down here. I'm going to give you guys a look here uh, at some of the T-shirts that are available. Boy, these are aggressive. Not ones that you want to wear to church. Um, 
What does that say? Oh, reaping. I was like, what? Why would you put that on a shirt? Okay, moving on here. Um, we've got um, places that you can hide money, hats. We have this. We have this very aggressive item. Wow. Not even, they, they didn't buy the, they didn't spring for the color ad. They just went for the black and white ad. Um, knuckles, OTFs. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, is, what, what, what's the purpose for that? We have another one of these, uh, Gil Hibben stuff. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. So, I mean, like, that's not bad, right? What is this? Timberwolf, a blade you won't find anywhere else. Okay. Um, six and a quarter inch full tank, 1095 fire kiss. Okay. So that's kind of neat, right? Um, that's, that's pretty, uh, uh, you know, straightforward. It looks like a functional design, 1095. And they've got some of that, um, you know, basically what uh, they, they just, uh, heat the steel up and give it that kind of interesting pattern. Um, not the same thing as the vulcanization you would see on a Medford knife, but interesting. And they're using a steel. I have no idea how it's heat treated, but they're using a steel that's proven to be good, um, in, uh, you know, circumstances that, uh, would, would call for the need of a knife like this. You have a straightforward wood handle that's been pinned. You've got a lanyard hole looks to be contoured. And I mean, there you go. That's a $30 knife that is probably fairly functional. So that's what I mean when I say there's stuff in here. I'm like, okay, I can kind of see. It may not be something that I'd go for, but it's not like the entire magazine is full of, of nonsense, right? Oh, man. Um. <laughs> oh, boy, look at that. Um, Zeus himself would have carried this knife on his belt. You you know that. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a statement to say that he would definitely this fictional character though then again i mean it's not like they you know it's not like they can prove it. they don't have to prove it because he's a fictional character keenly sharp nine and three quarter inches lightning bolt inspired jagged stainless steel blade weathered black pack of wood handle genuine leather belt sheath well okay i i mean i'm struggling to understand exactly what that is meant to cut because you're going to have a hard time cutting literally anything. It looks cool. A 16-year-old me or 15-year-old me would go, that's pretty cool. It looks cool. But I'm not thinking about practicality there. Bags, sleeping bags. Um, this is apparently a D2 po pocket knife. But $66.99. Um, okay. I mean, yeah, it's very tactical. But it doesn't look that... Um, uh, but... The pocket clip position looks like you've got one position and it's going to be tipped down um we have uh is it a retractable well some kind of uh fishing um <laughs> it's a fishing pole uh oh it was retractable okay interesting these these are useful items for um uh well here it says built for offensive and defensive battle okay uh, so that's, so we learned something there. Um, we also have, oh wait, <laughs> um, so here's, here's what they use to advertise this spear. Pierce the heart of the dark one. For those of you struggling, do you find yourself day to day in a, uh, an eternal batter, battle with the dark one? And you, you, you think to yourself, gosh, I wish I could just pierce the heart of the dark one. Well, now you can with your very own, uh, Aus 8 uh, stainless steel bladed uh, laser serialized um, kit ray uh, spe uh, dragon spear. Oh, here's a picture of the dark one. For those of you who have not encountered him for yourself, um, he is a, a dragon crab spider. Horrifying. But fortunately for $97.99, you can be rid of him forever. Um, made specifically for piercing the heart of the dark one. It's fine. I mean, if you like to collect this stuff, it's fine. It's just really funny to me. Um, another, you know, attractive looking design, but it's probably manu. I mean, it's it's definitely manufactured in China. These are not handmade, and they're not. They're using subpar materials. Five CR fifteen stainless. Um, we have a a crushing. Oh gosh, deliver that crushing blow against attackers. Okay, more swords, more combat stuff. Look at that thing, boy. Is this also uh, made for piercing the heart of the dark one? Oh no, it actually is. It's called El Diablo, so perhaps it's aligned with the darkness. That's in, that's that's great. They're arming both sides. 
more spike bats. Let's <laughs> see, that's kind of that's a that's visually attractive. I don't know that that's useful for anything other than you know causing harm, but um, it's visually attractive. Fire and ice throwing daggers. That's good. Um, what else do we have? Coins. Oh, Lord of the Rings inspired um, swords there. That's nice. I actually am a huge Lord of the Rings fan. This is why, I mean, like, you know, I, I do think some of the fantasy stuff is cool to look at, you know? Um, it, it be, I, I love fantasy. I love Lord of the Rings. Um, truthfully, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Um, and uh, a lot of the books that I read are kind of in that that realm. So this is, it, it's fun to look at, you know, but I'm, I'm thankful for being able to tell the difference sometimes. And I'll be honest, I can't always tell. Sometimes custom makers, like super high-end custom makers are actually handcrafted. And there's nothing in here that's, I'm, I'm going to guess 99.9% .9 of the stuff in this magazine is not handcrafted. They've got a, they've got a really crafty way. The only, the only crafting that's going on here is in the ad. They've got a good way of kind of maneuvering around, you know, actually, you know, describing what what's going on with the item. But these are all generally manufactured in China or Taiwan. Um, but yeah, uh, I do have a hard time telling sometimes with a super high-end custom maker that's got a fantasy-themed item, right? Sometimes I'm like, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here, and it might turn out to be like a $7,000 custom piece. <laughs> oh, boy. But there is definitely a difference, right? Um, I'm, uh, I'm enthralled by this. Um, so I'm trying to imagine, I mean, you've got a flashlight. So like you're walking through a dark area with the knife pointed, like the blade pointed forward towards the darkness so that you can also use the side mounted flashlight, right? <laughs> oh, that's fun. Uh, $12.99 for that, um, that piece. That's awesome. We have more spiked, it's a spiked gavel for truly passing the severest form of judgment on your foes, delivers devastating <laughs> devastating blows to any target. This gigantic mace is one massive piece of work. I will, I, that's a very accurate description of what this is. Uh, anodized stainless steel spikes, wooden head, ergonomic, <laughs> ergonomic, uh, 24 inches overall. Special 35 90, uh, 99 each so that you can get one for for all of your friends and family members um, Okay swords uh, Oh, this that's a strop. We have some sort of combat push. Uh, I always forget what these are ring daggers uh, Oh, it folds um, Man, uh, there's like any, anybody wanting to um, pick something up for Nick Shabazz's terrible gear live show just get yourself a Bud K magazine. <laughs> you have lots of stuff to pick from, absolutely. Um, backpacks, more cane swords, tactical watch, and hey, we're at the back of the magazine, guys. We made it all the way through. Um, this was a lot of fun, and I imagine that I'm gonna catch some. Uh, I'm gonna catch some crap for this, and you know, making fun of this and acting really snobby. But the truth is, is like I said, I I, I legitimately enjoy looking through here because it, it sort of I have this nostalgic connection with my past self, and I always you know I try to think of me as a teenager, a young kid, and how how uh, you know interested in all of these little like the, the rainbow uh, ballast songs, right? I never learned how to do that, but. Um, it, it's fun for me, you know, and I think most of us actually got into it and there uh, I'm sure there are a few people watching this video who are still interested in stuff like this and that's fine No judgment no judgment passed on to uh, you whatsoever But a lot of us who uh, those of you who watch my channel, you know for reviews like uh, knives like this or or the uh, the whole gritter or the the rat, you know some more practical um, either budget or uh, more high-end production knives you know, you've evolved into this world, but you know, we, you still probably came from roughly the same place. You know, not everybody, but a lot of us did. You know, learn the same way, and so that's why I thought this would be fun. Um, you can, you know, if, if you're really interested in this stuff, you can check out the Bud K website. But I have a ton of these magazines, along with lots of other, um, uh, you know. So like I've got a lot of magazines. That knives are a lot more practical, better designs. You know, but I just I enjoy looking at. Uh, any type of um, you know literature that's got color in it whether it's practical or impractical or it's fantasy or if it's tactical It doesn't matter. This is I'm a knife guy and I enjoy looking at stuff like this So anyways, I hope you guys kind of got the idea here and we're at least 
entertained by it. That's all this was, is just entertainment. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.